In one of my last videos, I made a tutorial on how to get an object from Blender into Unity, and since then I've received a lot of comments and questions about this, so today I'm going to show you how you can get an object like this into Unity from Blender, specifically an object that is metallic or has metallic parts. So if you like this video and game development is your thing, I'd love to see you around and I hope you consider subscribing. I have this soda can with two metallic materials that I'm going to add into my game and I thought this is a great example to use because it's a good insight into all of the things that can kind of go wrong in Blender, but also how to fix them. If you've worked with Blender at all, you know that getting your models from Blender into Unity isn't very straightforward, especially when it comes to funky materials. And the reason for this is that Blender and Unity are two different companies with two different goals, but have some overlap in the center. You can do some crazy things in Blender with their built-in node system that you just can't do in Unity, so kind of understandably, not everything is going to translate the same. But unfortunately, even things that are pretty standard, like a simple metallic material, will not transfer over with the click of a button. And while both have similar ways to handle the same thing, Unity really has no way of understanding what is going on inside of Blender because it's a completely different program. So we have to find something that both programs understand. So here's what I'm working with. I have two models here. I have the actual can and then I have the tab for the can. Now I want to join these two together, but before I can do anything, I need to make sure to apply any modifiers. On the actual body of the can, I have two materials that are controlling the effect, which will be relevant in a little bit. So I have this gradient effect that is controlling the actual color, and then I have this kind of brushed aluminum effect that I've made using Blender's built-in node system that is controlling the metallic effect. So what I need to do is take both of these materials and turn them into an image that wraps around the object because that is something that both Blender and Unity can understand. This is a process called baking, but before I can even do that, I have to create a map so that the materials know where on the object to wrap to. I'm going to start with unwrapping the body of the can, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to go into UV editing mode. And I do have to be in edit mode so I can select all of the geometry. And if you've used a primitive shape to start with, um, you'll probably see something here, but this is actually just the UV map of the original cylinder that I started with. So as I'm spot checking over here, you can see that not everything is, is showing up. So it's a little confusing because you are seeing something. However, it's not what you need. If I spot check the bottom, that is from the original cylinder. But if I go towards the top, anything that I have extruded um, will not show up on the map. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard select all then I'm going to hit U and then we're gonna do smart UV project and we're gonna give us just a tiny bit of margin here and there we go it's not the greatest use of space but it'll get the job done so now I'm gonna go and I'm going to do the same thing for the tab as well uh, hit a hit U smart UV project keep the same settings and there we go now we can join these two together but we just need to make sure that they are sharing the same name for the UV map so I'm just going to go into the UV map settings real quick they already were but just to make it even more clear I'm going to just name it coke can then go over to my other tab and name it coke can as well with both of those UV maps unwrapped, now we can select both of these objects in object mode select them together uh, right click and then press join. Now we can tab over to edit mode and see our new objects together. And look at that, now it's one object. Okay, so now we have both of our maps, but if we go back into our UV editing tab and hit A, we can see that the maps have kind of been placed on top of each other and we don't want that. So we actually have to unwrap it again. So I'm going to hit A, select everything, press U, smart UV project, Keep our same settings and apply and there we go we have our new map and we should be all good to go i'm just doing a quick little spot check here to make sure that we have everything and it looks like we do okay now i'm gonna go into my shading tab and we'll start with the brushed aluminum material first now we need to take both of our materials and bake them to an image you may already be familiar with how normal maps look, but metal maps are a little bit different and they operate on a scale of 0 to 1 or black to white 
white being completely metallic. Before we can bake anything though, we actually need to make sure that our metallic values are on zero. And since we have two materials on this object, we need to make sure that both of these materials have nothing plugging into that metallic slot and are also at zero or your bakes will turn out completely black. Even if you're baking a color image or something that has nothing to do with the metallic value, it will still turn out black. So we need to bake to an image. So we're going to search for a new node with Shift A, and then we're going to search for an image node. We're going to select new. I'm going to name it metal mat. Now we don't need the alpha value because it won't be transparent. And we're also going to change this to be a non-color value because we're not baking a color map. Okay, so this is where things get a little hairy. I'm going to leave this completely unconnected, but because I have one model with two materials, I actually need to copy and paste this to my other material. The reason for this is that when Blender is baking an image, it is looking specifically for image nodes. So if you bake to an image node with a name and then the other material doesn't have that same name somewhere, even if it's not being used on the other material, it will just overwrite any image node. So if you're baking something with a color and a metal and a roughness map, you're just going to keep overwriting your old images. This only applies if your object has different parts of the mesh with separate materials, but it is something to keep in mind. But the question then becomes, if we can't bake something that has a metallic value, how do we actually bake a metallic map? And the answer to that is to actually completely subvert that process. So instead of taking our values that were controlling the metallicness of the object and plugging them into the metallic slot, we're actually going to plug them into the final output node. And as you can see here, we are kind of getting that uh, black, white, marbled, gray kind of look. So we know that we're on the right track. Now comes the point where we can actually bake our map. So I'm going to select our image node that we want to bake to. We're going to select our object and then we're gonna go into our bake settings. So you can see that I am in cycles. Uh, you have to be in cycles to use baking. If you're in Eevee, you can just go to cycles and then switch back later, but Eevee doesn't support baking. So that's why we're doing that. And now in our bake type, we are actually going to go down to emit. Again, it doesn't totally make sense, but that's what it is for metal materials. And we can also go over here to our little preview window to see if the bake succeeded. And then finally, we get to press bake and see what happens. Now we can see our status at the bottom. If we're doing it right, we should not be receiving any error messages. If you're doing something wrong, you probably will get an error message, um, albeit it will be a cryptic one. But now it's a really good time to spot check our work. So I'm going to plug the BSDF back into the final output. And now I'm gonna plug that image that we just baked back into the metallic slot and see if it did what we wanted it to do. And while at first glance, it looks pretty good. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's not quite right. And the reason for that is that uh, I baked it with no margin unintentionally. So we need to redo this process again. And this time I'm gonna bump up my margins and we're gonna see if that fixes it. This is why it's always a really good idea to give yourself just a little bit of margin when you are creating the UV map because the baking process isn't totally perfect. And you can see now that I've done the second bake that Blender has baked over the seams just a little bit, giving us some grace. And now I'm gonna check my work again and I'm going to plug my image back into my metallic slot. And now that I'm looking at it, that looks perfect. So we're good to go on the metallic map for the can's lid. And now we are going to save this image to our desktop. Very, very important here and very easy to miss. If you go to this little icon, you need to click on save as, and we're gonna save it to our computer because Blender does not keep baked images stored on the blend file. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing for the can body, but of course the can body has some color here, so we're gonna bake the color map first. Make sure to unplug our metallic values from this slot and go back on over to our other material. Let's just get that other image node out of the way. So now I'm going to add a, another image node. This time we will leave it in the color space since it is a color map. We'll click on new. And I'm just going to name this can color. 
Now we need to repeat the same process as before. So I'm going to copy and paste this over to the brushed aluminum material as well, just so our other image doesn't get overwritten. And now we can actually bake this. Again, making sure that all of our metallic values are set to zero. Now heading back on over to our bake settings, and um, we're still gonna stay in cycles, but now we have to change the bake type to diffuse. And this just means color. We don't wanna bring in the direct or indirect light at all. We purely want the color. So we're just gonna hit that bottom check mark right there and press bake. Now let's double check our work real quick by plugging in the image node into the base color node and all looks right. All right, all is looking good. So I'm just going to unplug this and plug back in our color ramp. And now I'm going to save this image before I go any further. But if you remember, the body of the can was initially metallic and it's a little bit different than the top of the can because the body is completely metallic. Now to capture the metallic value for the body of the can, we need to repeat some of the same process. So we're going to create a new image texture node. I'm going to name it can body metal. And then I'm going to copy and paste this over to the other material. And then I'm going to flip back to my red material. Now, if you remember from earlier, metal maps operate on a scale of black to white. So in this case, the metallic value that we want is completely metallic. So what we're going to do is we are going to bake a completely white image to this map. We're going to do this by adding in an RGB node and changing the color to completely white. We're going to plug this color into the final output node, and then we're going to bake to this image texture. So now with my image node selected and my object selected and my preview open, I'm going to bake another metal map to this image. So I'm going to go back down here, hit bake. And it looks like I have done something wrong. Let's see what went wrong. And at some point while I was spot checking my work, it looks like I forgot to unplug the metallic node. So let's unplug that and try this again. Now I'm gonna come back and plug my color back into the final output node, make sure my image node is selected again, and let's try that again. I'm actually going to change the bake type this time to emit. And there we go, that looks right this time. Double check my work here for a second. And there we go, that looks perfect. Now it's just a matter of how to get this all into Unity. Let's save this real quick and we'll get it all packaged up. Now I'm just going to go through and plug all of my images into their respective slots before I export this. And remember, not all will need to be connected here. And I do have some roughness and normal values here, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial short, I'm just going to remove those now and I'll cover those in a follow up video. Now with all of my values connected, I'm just going to export this as an FBX. I'm just going to export as a mesh. I don't need to uh, bake the animation and I'm just going to say export. Okay, now in Unity, you can see I have a scene for my game here and I'm just going to drag and drop my FBX file into my prefabs folder. The one thing that actually carries over from Blender are the base color. So you can see that we have red and gray here, but it's not bringing in any of the other materials that we made. So what we have to do is first unpack this as a prefab so we can edit it, but then we have to create new separate materials for each of the materials that we had in Blender. So I had two materials in Blender, so I'm going to have two materials here. But the first thing we need to do is drag and drop over our maps. So I'm gonna drag over my color map and you can see it automatically understands where to go because we have the map. But uh, we need to do a couple other things to make sure that everything lines up right. It's a little deceiving because it kind of works just like this, but we actually need to create two materials in Unity, and then I'll teach you how to map up our texture so that they wrap around correctly and that we can modify them. It's a little bit deceiving because what's happening here is Unity recognizes that there are two materials that are coming from Blender, but they are not going to give us access to edit them since they are from the Blender file. So what we need to do is create two new materials inside of Unity that we can edit. So the first material I'm going to create is the can body. And once we have that open, we can actually drag and drop our color map 
onto that base map section right there and then we can drag and drop the metallic map onto the metallic map section. Now we just need to drag and drop this over our object and you can see that there it is, works perfectly. Now we need to do the same thing for the cans, base and lid. So I'm going to create a new material for that. And then I'm going to drag it onto the metallic map section over here. Then finally, I'm just going to drag and drop this onto that section of the object and you can see that it applies. It's looking a little bright because the default base color is white. But if we drag that down to gray, now you can see the different metallic effect that we had created. And there you go. That is how you get objects that are metallic or have metallic parts from Blender into Unity. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.